Hello chemists and welcome to today's lesson where we're going to be looking at reactions which follow the mechanism of elimination. Elimination reactions always produce alkenes, certainly at AS anyway. So let's get started and have a look at these reactions. In this first reaction, let's have a look at how a halogenoalkane can be converted to an alkene. Take this halogenoalkane, 2-bromobutane. We're reacting it with a base, I've shown potassium hydroxide here, but it could also be sodium hydroxide. The role of this base is to deprotonate one of the hydrogens that is on the carbon next to the carbon with the bromine bonded to it. That sounds a little bit complicated, but here's the carbon with the bromine bonded to it, and here's a carbon next to that one. All of these hydrogens, one of those might be deprotonated, and of these two hydrogens, because this carbon is next to the carbon-bromine bond, one of these hydrogens could be deprotonated as well. So this means that as there's different hydrogens that could be deprotonated, there's a whole range of different products. Now all of these products are alkenes, and if your alkene meets the requirement for EZ geometric stereoisomerism, then that could occur as well. You can see we've got stereoisomers of butene, and we've also got butene here. So let's have a look at how these different products form. Notice as a byproduct, you always get the salt of whatever halogen uh, was on the organic compound or the halogen alkane and you also get water as a result of hydroxide acting as a base. So the mechanism for this is elimination. If you start with something larger and you end up with an alkene then typically you're looking at an elimination reaction. Our conditions are as follows. We're going to use sodium or potassium hydroxide, but it's important to note that it must be ethanolic and warm. Ethanolic, again, means dissolved in ethanol. If you did this under aqueous conditions, instead, you'd get nucleophilic substitution, where in the place of this carbon-bromine bond here, you'd have a carbon-hydroxyl bond, so a COH. So important to note, this is ethanolic in order to achieve elimination. Other than that, the conditions are basically the same. So let's have a look at the mechanism for the butuenes here, okay? So we've got to form butuene. Well, here's my 2-bromobutane again, and here's my hydroxide, and this isn't acting as a nucleophile here, it's going to be acting as a base. Now, we need to consider which hydrogens this could deprotonate. It's only going to deprotonate one, but we need to consider the one that it would. So I've highlighted them here. And you'll notice that these hydrogens are on the carbons next to the carbon with the bromine on it. I often use another way of describing this, which is that if you can count three bonds between your bromine and your hydrogen, then that hydrogen is suitable for deprotonation. Look at this. Here's the bromine. One, two, three. That's good. One, two, three. That's good. And you see the same would work for the others. If I tried this one here, one, two... It's not three bonds away, so it doesn't work. So there's another way of describing the same concept. Now I've got to form butuene. Now I'm going to show you this mechanism to start with, and then you'll see better for butuene why I'm selecting these particular protons here. So I'm going to deprotonate this hydrogen. This hydrogen is going to move its electrons towards this bond here to create a double bond. But if we're forming a double bond here, that would mean that carbon has five bonds. It can't do that, so the bromine has to leave, taking its electrons with it, and therefore it becomes bromide. This is basically a one-step mechanism uh, in the fact that we don't have any intermediates, and all the curly arrows are shown in the first step. So here we go. I've summarised structurally some of the uh, functional parts of this molecule, the methyl groups here and here and here and here. These are essentially the same. They're both butuene, but I've shown that we've got the Z geometric stereoisomer and the E geometric stereoisomer as products for this reaction. That's because if we look at this carbon here, then it has two different substituents. This carbon here has two different substituents. So the left-hand side and the right-hand side carbons of the CC double bond both have two different substituents. Therefore, it meets the requirements for um, EZ geometric stereoisomerism. So if it meets those requirements, we need to show both stereoisomers as our products here. We've got KBr, potassium bromide, and water as our byproducts. Now, if we look back at this mechanism, what you can see is because I deprotonated this hydrogen here, the electrons moved into this bond between the two middle carbons, hence the reason I got butuene. 
If I did it on the end here, then those electrons would move in between the two carbons on the end here. So you'd end up with butanoin. So it's important to select the correct hydrogens for forming the correct position isomer of your product. So we've got different isomers going on to be clear here. These two products are stereoisomers of each other. And to be specific with the type, they are geometric EZ stereoisomers. Whereas if we compare these two with this one, then because these are both but 2 -ene and this one's but 1 -ene, these are position isomers of each other, which is a type of structural isomerism. So we're looking at EZ geometric stereoisomers, and then we're looking at position structural isomers. Let's now have a look at the mechanism for but 1 -ene. I've left the mechanism for but 2 -ene up here for reference. So with but 1 -ene, let's consider which hydrogens are possible for deprotonation again. And remember the way that those curly arrows moved. In order to get the double bond here to make but 1 -ene, I'm going to need to deprotonate one of these end hydrogens. It doesn't matter which one you do, as long as you show its electrons from the carbon hydrogen bond moving into the CC bond to make a CC double bond. So I'm going to deprotonate the one down low to keep it nice and simple. We'll move the electrons into the CC bond and then bromine will be eliminated. And this is ultimately why it's called elimination because you're eliminating a small group. Okay. There we go. The bromide will pair up with the potassium ion that typically was with the um, hydroxide ion when it was first added to form potassium bromide. And we've got but one e Notice this time how I haven't listed EZ uh, geometric stereoisomers of but one e And this is because the left-hand side of the CC double bond does have two different groups, but the right-hand side of the CC double bond doesn't have two different groups. You need both sides to each have two different groups in order for EZ geometric stereoisomerism to be a potential. Next up, we're going to look at a different type of elimination, um, which converts an alcohol into an alkene. Notice again how we are ending up with an alkene, so we must be looking at elimination. And this one's called dehydration. And if you've seen my other video um, on electrophilic addition, then um, you'll notice some similarities between this reaction and a, a previous electrophilic addition reaction, which was known as hydration. This is that, but in reverse. And a lot of the conditions are almost identical as well. Take an alcohol here. We've got uh, butan-2-ol, okay, four long, position two. So we've got butan-2-ol. And we are going to dehydrate this butan-2-ol to make a range of different alkenes. Notice again how we've got two products which are EZ geometric stereoisomers of each other. And then when we compare these two products with our other product, they are position structural isomers of each other. Water has been eliminated in this case. It's the product of elimination, small molecule. So our mechanism is elimination and our conditions are as follows. You can either use a concentrated sulfuric acid catalyst and heat, or you can use phosphoric acid and heat. Notice how these are basically the same as the conditions for hydration, except with hydration you would have been adding these reagents and water, or steam, to an alkene. In this case we're adding these reagents to an alcohol, and we're not adding water. Water is actually the product of this reaction. And typically when you dehydrate, you have some method of getting rid of the water. Typically it's called something like a Dean Stark apparatus. If you want to look one of them up, they're quite cool. So let's have a look at the mechanism for both the E and Z geometric isomers. So to begin with, we've got our butan 2 ol here. And either one of our acids are a source of hydrogen ions, H+. And actually the lone pair on an oxygen of the hydroxyl group is actually going to act as a nucleophile in the first stage um, and form a dative covalent bond with that hydrogen ion. So we're going to show that as a curly arrow moving from the middle of the lone pair onto the hydrogen ion itself, not onto its positive charge, onto the actual hydrogen. Okay, so this will form an intermediate where we have a positively charged oxygen atom. And if you look at this group here now, all it's really done is the oxygen's picked up a hydrogen. Yeah? So one of these is a dative covalent bond. 
one of these oxygen hydrogen ones but it looks a little bit like water doesn't it h2o and that's because it's going to leave as water any second now so we're going to show that by removing one of the hydrogens just as we did previously okay so what we can do is if we look at where this carbon oxygen bond is now we can select hydrogens that are up to three bonds away from that oxygen just like we did with the bromine so one two three 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 but again not this one okay so looking at those carbons next to where we've got the um, group that we're eliminating going on we can see that these are our suitable hydrogens now we're trying to form butene so just pause for a second think about which hydrogen we'd want to remove and push its electrons between two carbons to form two uh, butene think about that for a second okay so you should have selected either one of these hydrogens here so we're going to show that like this okay now we don't need to show this time the hydrogen actually being deprotonated by a base because the positivity of almost this watery group over here is enough to actually drive the leaving of that hydrogen itself so then what will happen is when we push these electrons in here to form the double bond, imagine just that bond hinging round and then going in that position there, this carbon can't have five bonds, so this needs to leave as water. If it takes its electrons with it, then it will, it will um, neutralise that positive charge. So then we end up with our lovely butene, both variants of it. We've got the E and the Z. We don't know which one will be the major or the minor product, but we know that both will be formed. Um, if you do want to um, look at that, that would probably be more university level if you were looking at which one of these would be major and which would be minor. Okay, so we've got those products there, Z butene and E butene. Um, if you're wondering how we name these, then um, I will be creating a video, it might already be ready, depending on when you're watching this, on the Kahn Ingold Prelog nomenclature, which is um, called the prioritization rules for how you decide on E and Z. Um, but an easy way to remember is that uh, Z is there on the same side. And uh, E, for me, I remember it as Egyptian. I can't really show you it here, but it's almost like when you're doing that thing with your arms, the, uh, the sort of stereotypical Egyptian, sort of ancient Egyptian um, painting pose. So um, sometimes for Z, I imagine Almighty Zeus, as if you're sticking both hands up into the air, praying to the gods. And remember that um, water is a byproduct here. OK. So now let's keep that mechanism up here and have a look at the mechanism for Butte one -ing. So um, same mechanism as before. First thing we've got to do is form a dative covalent bond between the hydroxyl group, um, oxygen and the hydrogen ion. So that's exactly the same. Then we need to consider um, which of our protons we need to deprotonate. Remember the ones that you've got three bonds away or on the carbons next to the functional group. And we can see we've got these five to choose from. We want to form butene, so we want to form the double bond here. So that means that these two are not applicable, but any one of these three could pop their electrons into there like that. OK, so we're going to go for the bottom one and then we're going to eliminate water. And there we go, we've got butene, but as the left-hand side and the right-hand side carbons of the CC double bond do not both contain two different substituents, then butene does not have the feasibility to have EZ geometric stereoisomers. But remember that butene is a position structural isomer of the other products that we could have formed. I hope you found that tutorial useful. I'd recommend now that you read up on CIP nomenclature. These are a series of rules. It stands for Kahn Ingold Prelog. It's a series of rules which you can use to prioritize different groups around the left hand side and the right hand side of a CC double bond in order to name it as either E or Entergegen and Z Zusammen. OK, so do have a good look at that because it ties up really nicely with elimination reactions because they form alkenes. I'll see you in the next video. Thanks very much for watching.